Okay, we are on. We are live. We are live on telephone. We are live on Ustream. We are live on video. So there we go. Uh, please, if you have any, uh, Devon, can you see it live? It's live now on Ustream. I can find you, but I'm not getting it. I'm not getting it to go live. Yeah, just www dot something something, or just go to Ustream, and then you type in the Kai Mary show. She will just come up automatically. Okay. I see you. You straight. We we have this thing for someone. See that, but I'm not getting it. I'm not getting it. Yeah, it is very clear on this side. Please. Whoever is watching live on Ustream, if you want to call in 316-765-0060, call in. Let me know how you are watching it out there. Let me know. Let me know how you are seeing what is happening out there. So, because I want to make sure that everybody has equal opportunity of either watching or listening. Please, if you can, if you cannot hear me very, very well, let me know so that I can tweak, tweak the system so that you can hear very well. Please, if you are in a car, can you stop your car and stay in one place? Because I'm making this an opportunity for everybody to hear everybody. That's why I opened the line. So please, if there is a noise on your own end, Please turn the noise off so that we can all be able to enjoy this program. Now let's pray. Let's lift up our hands and let's begin to ask God for the Spirit of God to come in. Let me pray first. I bring every spirit of humans and I call on the Spirit of God to come upon this program tonight. Let there be a mighty outpouring of the spirit of life upon this program. Dear Holy Spirit, come. You are the leader of mission. Come upon the church house program tonight. As we gather from different places of the world, we ask you to be the leader. Come and help your people the way you want to do it. Not me. I surrender our will, our intelligence. I surrender our spiritual gift, our human pride. We yield everything to you. We need miracles today. We need you to expose things to us. We need you to clarify things. Give us new direction. Give us new directives. In Jesus' name, I bring every human spirit and I bring every demonic spirit under the authority of Jesus Christ and under my authority. In Jesus' mighty name, I bring every pain, torture, torment, conflict, harassment, embarrassment. I bring under my feet and under the feet of Jesus. Every disease and problem under the authority of the heavenly atmosphere in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Wherever the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Let liberty reign. Let freedom come to God's people in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Now I want you to lift up your voice and begin to tell God the reason why you are here on this church house program tonight. Tell God why you are here. Tell him what you want him to do for you. Lord, I'm here tonight to worship. I'm here tonight to worship. I'm here tonight to worship. I'm here tonight to worship you. I'm here tonight to worship you. I'm here tonight to worship you. 
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for the opportunity you've given to your people to come and seek your face. In Jesus' mighty name. Yes, sir. This place is packed with the power of God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for taking position of me, Lord. Thank you for taking position of this atmosphere. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for the atmosphere of heaven. Thank you for the government and economy of heaven. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for the power. Thank you for your dominion. Thank you for your lordship. Thank you, Lord. I worship you. I adore you. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise be to you, Jesus. Praise be to you forever. Hallelujah to your name. Thank you for miracles. Thank you for signs and wonders tonight. Thank you, Lord, for calling all those that you want to be in this program to be in this program tonight. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for blowing around the world. Blow around the world and remind your people that they have an appointment with you tonight. Remind them, Spirit of life, Remind them, send harvesters after them. Send harvesters after your people. And let them begin to leave what they are doing and begin to seek you because you are greater than whatever they are doing in life. Thank you, Lord, for gathering your people from everywhere on earth to come and worship, to come and seek your face, to come and pray to you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for changing Amen. Yes, sir, we thank you tonight. We execute judgment against principalities, against authorities, and we pull them down. We command them pulled down and broken. We command the intelligence destroyed, wiped out. Their confusion destroyed, wiped out. Thank you for angelic visitation at this point. Thank you for the gathering of angels. Thank you for the gathering of your mighty ones. Now let me begin to speak to you. I want you to give me your attention tonight because what I'm going to tell you is going to be beneficial to you for the rest of your life. I'm going to talk to you as a father to his spiritual children. So give me all your attention. Don't let anybody distract you because this is not something that you will hear in a church. Church folks do not know what I'm talking about. Church pastors, many of them have no idea what I'm going to tell you tonight. So I want you to give me full attention. And if what I'm going to be telling you has something to do with you, you're going to change quickly. You're going to change quickly. You're going to call me. Find some time to call me and let's begin to deal with these deep, deep issues. Now, there are what we call deep things. There are the deep things of this earth that no devil in hell wants you to know about. And I'm going to share many of them with you tonight, some of them, as much as the Spirit of God, however the Lord leads in this thing. First, 
I want to talk to you about what I call a cycle, the cycle of the ghost. I'm not talking about the Holy Ghost. It's what we call the cycle of the ghost. How many of you have seen a ghost before? If well, you have, I don't know if I have. I've seen something. If you've ever seen, what is a ghost? What is a ghost? A ghost. Uh oh. A ghost is a personality, a person without body. It is a person with a spirit body. A ghost is a being, an entity without no human body. They are these embodied beings, purely spirit. Now, there is what we call, let me begin with the strong man of a family, then I will go into the cycle of the ghost. Because I'm talking to you about deep things, part one. I'm going to talk about part two, part three, part four until we finish. I'm going to start by telling you this. I want you to begin to look at the history of your family very seriously. History is so serious that God asked Moses and the rest of them to write down names of people. Names of family, people born. Statistics is very, very important. It should not be government alone that should keep the record of your family. You must keep record of who comes into your family and who goes out of it. Who is born into it. Who die in it. Who are married into it. You are going to be very careful about who are married into your family. Because you make one silly mistake of allowing one Jezebel, one Ahab, one bad Solomon. You allow one dirty, arrogant person into your family history. That might be the end of your family. Who do you sleep with? For some people, sex is fun. Sex is sweet. Sex is delicious. For some people, eating together, drinking together, smoking together, smoking tobacco product with people is great. It's a form of social get together. Consulting Ouija boards, witches, warlocks, the zodiac, the signs, astrology, witch doctors, voodoo priests, entering into different cults, into different brotherhoods, going into certain bad churches. Just wherever you think your problem could be solved, you go in. Wherever you think you can make some money, you go in. Wherever you think you can have some power, you go in. Tonight is a night of warning for you to begin to look at the history of your family. I'll tell you, I'll give you an example. There is nobody, there is no family where people have dabbled into ancestral worship, satanic, luciferian practices, practices of witchcraft, casting of spells. There is nowhere where people have dabbled into the deep things of Satan where that family remained the same. There is nowhere where people have dabbled into scamming people, stealing from people, abusing people, raping people, alcoholism, drug addiction, stealing, talkativeness, all kind of wickedness, shedding human blood, gambling unnecessarily, entering into wicked covenants. There is nowhere 
where people have entered into these things that that family has remained the same. No way. So I want you to think very carefully about what I'm saying. Think very carefully about what I'm saying. Excuse me, let me set something right, please. Just a minute, let me set something right now. Turn it off. I think it's enough here. Yeah. Okay, there we go. Mm -hmm. I didn't even observe that it was still playing. <laughs> <laughs> there is no way, there is no family history since the beginning of creation where people double into the occult. People dabbled into stealing. People dabbled into immorality of the highest kind. People are loose sexually. Where people dabble into satanic practices and witchcraft of the highest forms, occultic practices, casting spells, consulting horoscope, gambling of the highest kinds, and small kind, I'm talking of something that is part of the person's life. Lying in high places. Watch. There is no family where greed for money, greed for material resources, greed for power. There is no family where this thing I've mentioned are found where Trouble is not bound to happen. Death. You can never go to your enemy to ask for help. You must know that you have an enemy just because you are human has made you an enemy of somebody who is an enemy of God. So, why do you have to go to the enemy of God for help? Why do you have to go to your enemy for help? Is the question I'm asking you tonight. There is no family where people dabble and where people dabble and where people are engaged in all days that there is not bound to be plenty of big, big problems. Where people run in and out of marriage. I'm not talking of people who leave marriages because they have the right, they, they, they want to save their neck. But I'm talking of where people entered into marriage to use and abuse and then walk out of it. There is going to be a generational problem. Please, please, please watch your telephone. Please, please. I do not know whether I, I need to begin to mute to turn everybody listening to everybody. I think I should start to do that. I don't know. So that we will not be hearing the noise from each person. But the reason why I keep it open is so that we can interact. So if you can help us by not moving around, by things not happening on your own end so that everybody can enjoy this, that would be so good. I would really appreciate it. Thank you. So tonight, I am talking about the deep things. Number one thing I want to share with you is this. If you have ever lived in a city before, you ever had a job before, you moved away from that city, because of the problem that happened there. You were involved in a lot of things. You went to jail. You were involved in drugs. You were involved in this and that. All kind of stuff. Or you grew up in that city. And there was a lot of violence. While you were growing up. And you participated. You participated in a lot of drunkenness. And orgies and all kind of stuff. 
there was failure for you in that city. That city did not, the spirit of that city did not welcome you. So you moved away. There is what we call the cycle of a ghost. Every city, every village, every town, every countryside has a ghost. There is not just an angel that watches over a city. There is also a satanic entity, a ghost that hovers around a city that you have to battle with and overcome. If you do not overcome the ghost of your city, you will be a total failure. You will end up being affected by the problems of that city. If racism happens in that city, it will, it will come to you. If there is sexual immorality and satanic practices in that city, it will come to you. So listen carefully. Until you overcome the ghosts of your city, you will never be free to enjoy living in that city. So before you move to any city, bind the strong man first. Bind the strong woman first. These are things that I learned late in my life. Nobody taught me this in the seminary. A lot of people are born into cities where they have not yet taken authority over that city. So the ghost of the city rules over your life. And then because of too much pressure in your city, you moved away. You will discover something. After some numbers of years, the ghost of that city will begin to make a call. You see, demons do not forget a face. Demons do not forget a name. They do not forget a family. They do not forget your birth. They do not forget your birthday. Neither do they forget where you live now, where you move to. That's why when you move to a new city, the demon of the new city will contact the demon of your old city to get information about you. And then begin the same strategy and more in order to put you under the government of that ghost of the new city. So listen carefully. There is what we call the cycle of the ghost which is after some years the city where you used to live you will want to go back to that city the city where you had a divorce the man that you used to sleep with the woman that you used to sleep with the place of job that you were thrown out will begin to call you back to come back home I have observed something from where I am from, back in Africa. After some years, you will see the ghost of the city calling people to come back home. And they only come back home to stay for a while and then they die. <laughs> that is the reason why you see some people they will live where they are because when the ghost of the city where they were before begin to call for the people to come back to that city, you will discover something. Your job, please, is somebody sleeping? Please, turn the phone off. I should mute this thing. I think that would have been better. Yeah. If I mute it, you guys will not be listening to each other. That's the problem, you see? Hello, everybody. Is everybody there? Hello. I'm here. Okay, please, if anybody, before you come to my line, please try and sleep at home first. Don't come and sleep because if not, 
it's possible that I will begin to mute the system so that you guys can only hear me alone. You cannot hear each other. Except when I want you to pray with each other, then I turn the phone open. Then everybody can hear everybody. I think that will be the way we should do it. Because it sounds like some people are coming tired. I don't want no tired body with God. Now let me continue to tell you. Yeah, no tired. If you're already tired, then don't come to the pray. Don't come to don't come to my program if you're already tired and worn out. I don't need no tired body. Don't give God your tired and worn out body. God doesn't want it. You can't go and spend 90% of your time with everybody else and everything else and then you come and give God 0. Point something 0% 0 of his, of your time and you think that is God is, God is not God is not a small person to be dealt with like, like 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 that. Please if you're tired don't come to the program. You can watch it. I will make sure that the video is on YouTube the following day for you to watch. Make sure you sleep. Those of you in England are doing better. Those of you in Europe are doing good. They will tell me, we are going to bed so that we can wake up by 8 o'clock your time in order to be there. So they go to bed. Like five hours back, they are in bed, sleeping. They turn their phone off. They don't answer no phone call. And then they put the alarm on. So that when once it's few minutes to 8 o'clock, the alarm wakes them and they're on the program. They've already slept. They are nourished. They are strong. I think I like the way they do it in England and Europe and Asia. That's what they are doing so that they can watch the program. But those of us here, we are not doing it right. We just jump from different things. We have no time to rest. We jump into the program. So if you feel that you're going to sleep on your telephone, then don't come. Go to bed. Don't come. You watch it tomorrow. Now let me continue to say what I'm saying. At a particular time, the same ghost that caused the problem that made you to begin to look for a job somewhere else. The same ghost that broke the relationship, that broke the marriage, will want to take you back to the same old person that abused you. You will be surprised that your job begins to close up the new relationship begins to go down. Your money begins to finish. Your health becomes poor. And you ask yourself, what is happening? And then you begin to think of going back home. And what happened? While you are coming down from the Greyhound bus station, or while you are coming down from the airplane to enter the taxi, to go to your old home, to your family home, on the way, you start running into some old friends that you used to hang around with. How come? Is it a coincidence that that same moment, you begin to meet the old faces that you used to see before? You ask this one, Tom, when did you come back? He said, oh, Matt, I came back just like a month ago. Really? Where did you used to live? Oh, I used to live in a so and so place. He said, really? What happened? They begin to tell you a story that is, the pattern is almost like your own pattern. And what happened? The next few days, you are going to the store to go and grab a soda and you run into your old girlfriend or into your old boyfriend. Is that a coincidence? And the love begins to sparkle. How many kids do you have? You ask your old uh, girlfriend. Oh, I have five kids. And then she turns around and asks you, how many do you have? You say, oh, I have eight. Then she said, oh, you've been pretty busy than myself. <laughs> Hallelujah. And then both of you start another relationship. Let me tell you why I'm sharing this with you. The ghosts of the former job, of the former marriage, of the former relationship is busy trying to bring you so as to finish the job that he could not succeed in making you carry it out against each other. So listen carefully. The ghost of the city wanted you and your husband to kill each other. But you were smart enough to get a divorce and walk away. And now things went wrong with the woman. Things went wrong with you in the different relationship. And now you coincidentally meet each other. 
in the same city where you were abandoned. And you start again. This is what I'm going to tell you. When a relationship, you try it once and twice, it did not work, abandon it. Don't go back to any relationship that did not work. The reason is this. People hardly changed except by the work of the Holy Ghost. Reason? They do not want to easily abandon their bloodline. They do not want easily to abandon families that are worthless. They do not want to abandon people that give them an emotional high, especially the voices of people in their families and friends that they hold on to, even though the voices of those people are voices of witches and warlocks and bad people who do not want they themselves. Because, let me give you an example. I know of a lady who before she got married, all the women that were her women friend or godmothers were all women that divorced their husband. Now, what do you think is going to happen with such a lady when she gets married? What do you think is going to happen? I watched that lady got married. And she did not last in that marriage. And the same ghosts of that relationship came back. And what happened? She also divorced her own husband. So think about that. I want you to watch who is the ghost in your family. What is the pattern of the ghost in your family? There is a ghost in your family that is called the strong man with a stronghold. And that spirit is married to everyone in your family. Watch the same pattern. Every male must go to jail. Every male or woman must go to jail, must have a squabble with the cops. All the males will become drug dealers, one way or the other. All the women must have children outside marriage, whether they like it or not. They must have six, seven kids for six, seven men. Same thing with the men. They must make nine, ten, eleven, twelve women pregnant. Same ghost is at work in the families. I want you to take time with me to begin to look at the deep things in your family. The deep, deep, deep things. There are, there are deep things in your family. There are deep things calling you. Number two, don't allow the ghost of the past to keep calling you to come back. Your, your, the old boyfriends, they start coming back. The old girlfriend, they start coming back. The old job where you were disgraced, where you, you had so much problem, keep calling you back. You want to go back there and apply again. Do not go back to places where you have abandoned to places that did not honor you, to places that abandoned you, to people that treated you wrongly. Do not go back to them. It's not acceptable. The reason is this. They will finish what they did not finish with you and you won't like it. The message today is a warning. I am speaking as a prophet of God to some people out there. Because you want to go back to those things and that lifestyle that is not profitable. The ghost of that city is calling you back. Many of you, it is the ghost of your family. Your family has a ghost, a strong man. And that strong man want to make sure that everybody is poor in your family. Everybody is poor in your family. Today I was praying with somebody that called me last night. I said, call me back in the morning, all the way from Germany. As we were praying, I told her, I said, you have consulted some witch doctors. She said, yes. I said, not one. She said, yeah, that's true. Do you not know that when you begin to consult astrologers, some Buddhist and Hindu gurus, 
I owe them no apology because this is true. You begin to consult some, some teachers in some of these religions, some leaders. You begin to go to native doctors, witch doctors, voodoo. You begin to go to black witches, black magic, white magic. I don't know. I don't know why they should be called all white, black, and red because magic is magic. White witch, black witch. Witch is witch. Witchcraft is witchcraft. Sorcery is sorcery. There is nothing like black one and red one. There is nothing like white one. It's all evil. Let's face it. And let's not make a race out of what we should not make race of. We've been deceived enough by the squads of hell. And we cannot go back there. If the ghost of your family is calling you, resist it. There are families that the ghost of that family has vowed that none of you will ever be rich. None of you will ever be a millionaire. None of you will ever have good things. That is why you build a house. You can enjoy it. Something will happen. The bank will take over. You have a property that your parent died and left for you. Somebody else came. Take over. There is a fight and all that. You buy a car, it doesn't last long, it breaks down. You buy another one, it breaks down. Nothing that you buy, nothing you try to do, ever you finish it or ever you, you, you are able to maintain it or sustain it. Money comes into your life, it all flies out. You don't even know what you do. When money comes into your life, you feel good. That's one, one of the biggest problems I have with poor people. A lot of poor people would have been wealthy by now. It's only that they are terribly foolish with their money. They do not. Why are they foolish? Because they do not ask question. How do I invest what I have? They don't ask those questions. That's the problem. The biggest problem of poor people is our inability to ask the right question and the arrogancy of thinking that spending money and having money to do whatever the heck they want make them feel important. Money was not meant just to be spent like that. Money was to be invested on things that will bring back profit and benefits, whether from God or from the universe. When I release money to another man of God or woman of God or, or to a charity or to something, I am not giving God no free money. So hear me and hear me well. The teaching I'm doing tonight is not free. God owes me a debt. The universe owes me a debt. Humanity owes me a debt. Because what I'm doing, I'm pouring my blood, I'm pouring my energy, I'm pouring everything in me into your life. And I must reap from it. I'm not giving God no free service. God doesn't give nobody no free service either. There's no free lunch. That's why I've learned how the game is played. I go to a new city, I tell whatever ghost is there, I say, listen, I am the new sheriff in town. This city, oh, it will not be enough for you and I. You have to go somewhere else. <laughs> yeah. The city is not big enough for you and I. So go to another one. Because the law, the law of the supernatural says, when the bigger spirit appears, the inferior spirit must leave. That's all. So when I appear, I'm the bigger boss. The smaller dogs must leave because I'm the big dog in town. It's as simple as that. And that is why I, I told this story over and over. I went to a church. It's called a church. Not everything that is called a church is a church. Hear me well. Many of them are places, they are shrines of darkness. I went into a place that called itself a church. I sat at the very back. The owner came right from the altar and came to the back and played with me. I said, young man, you have to leave this place. I said, ah, mama, what is wrong? He said, well, let me, let me take you outside and explain to you. I mean, the church was packed full. She left, the, she left the altar where she was doing something and came down to the back and held my hand and said, young man, I'm asking you, please, you have to go. I said, mama, why? This is a church I come to worship. She said, oh, no. She said, this is not a church. Here we perform ceremonies for people. We give them good luck. 
we give them husband and wife, we, we take blood. She began to confess to me. She said, listen, let me tell you, as far as you are sitting in this church, the demons that walk with me, the spirits that walk with me will not come. Immediately you step into this building, they all left. All the power that walk with her, immediately I stepped into that place, they all ran away from her. And she could not see anymore. She could not see. The woman couldn't see for people because she would be calling people and telling, giving them prophecies and so on and so forth. Immediately I stepped in. She could not look and see anything in the crystal ball. And she, she knew it was me. She walked right. I have not prayed no prayer. I have not bound no devil. I just came and sat down to worship in that church. She came right to the back and said, Young man, you have to leave. That's, that's how it is. And I left. I didn't want nobody to call the police on me. I left quietly. <laughs> I left quietly. I left. And then the woman turned around and she said to me, God bless you. Do you know how heavy? Yeah, she told me, God bless you. I accepted the blessing. I said, Amen, Amen, Amen. And then she turned around and said to me, Young man, let me tell you something. You should go and start your own church. You carry too much power with you. I've seen something. I have been in a house where another the, the another guy that lives in the same compound, my mom's or oh, my mom's brother. My mom's brother. I was in his house in a big city back in Nigeria. And there is the, the next door neighbor. The mom came into town. So like us, when our mom come to visit us, our, we leave our bed, our bedroom for our mom or for our dad. We don't sleep. It is, we would rather sleep on the floor or in the couch. Our parents, we never allow our parents to sleep in the couch or to sleep on the floor. Never. They will, they will sleep on the bed. Even if they are going to stay with us for one year or two years, they will have our bedroom. We don't, we don't have any more access to our bedroom. That's our culture. So when the mom came, the guy now left. His, he has only one bedroom. And he didn't have an additional something to put on the floor to sleep. So he begged, uh, he begged my, uh, my nephews to, for him to come and sleep in my room uh, because I had an extra bed. So he came and slept in the, in, the, in the other bed in the other room. Around one o'clock midnight, I started dreaming that I was seeing a, a firefly with a bright light coming into the house. I was dreaming of a firefly entering, entering, entering the apartment, entering my, my, uh, my, my, my room. As I was dreaming about this, I saw the firefly try to come to where I was, but there was light, big light at the door of my bedroom, so it couldn't come near. So it went to the bedroom where the, the other man, he was an older man, was sleeping. And I saw the firefly. The Holy Spirit is a witness what I'm telling you. I saw the firefly turn into a cat, into a pussycat. A big fat pussycat. And began to scratch the man and lick the man's blood. Are you guys listening to me? Yes. Yeah. I am teaching on the deep things, part one today. Now, yeah. not that time when I finish teaching, I, I am afraid of, listen, the blood of Jesus is already covering me. I have a fence around me. Let any devil ever try me. Because the stronger one dwells in me. I saw the fire fly. Turned into a big fat pussycat and began to scratch the man with long nails and lick the man's blood. And you are seeing it in a dream. Then suddenly, because if, if a dream is real, if, I'm, if I begin to see it in the supernatural, something will tell me, wake up. So somebody just took me on my side and said, wake up. It's normally an angel. And I woke up. As I woke up, the man knew. The cat knew that I'm awake. I opened the door instantly. I saw the man in a second turn from a cat back to a firefly physically and opened the door. 
I mean physically, my door, the door of my room opened itself and the man left. And I saw the man going down the steps and I went out the steps, run after him and I saw him enter his house and close the door. It was the witch wow. doctor. Mm. There was a witch doctor that was practicing in my mother's brother's compound. He rented a room there, lived there, and people were coming to him for him to make to make uh, charms and to make bad bad things for them, to make voodoo stuff for them. So that guy insulted him some days ago. They had a clash. So he came for revenge that night and licked that guy's blood. Now, I didn't tell the guy what happened. I turned the light on and I look at him. The blanket that he covered himself, somebody has removed the blanket. And I look at his back. He's still sleeping. Oh. He's in a deep sleep because when they are coming to attack you, they put you in a deep sleep. This guy was still sleeping. I look at his back. His back has been torn. Like when you see a cat, a cat a tearing stuff, his back has been torn. I saw the claws on his back, on his hand. I covered him back with a blanket and I went back to my bed. Something told me, don't say a word about this. He's supposed to be a strong man. He's older than you. And yet you are stronger than him. Early in the morning, this guy went to go and take his bath. Uh, there is a soap we have back in Africa. I think they might have it here. It's called Lux. L-U-X. It's called Lux. It's very favorite. It's a favorite soup in the Caribbean in African countries. He went to take, and when you use Lux soap to take a bath, when you use Lux bath soap to take a bath, if you have a scratch anywhere, when that soap enter into that scratch, you will feel, you, you will shout. <laughs> This guy went to take, yes. He went to go and take his bath. When he went to go and take his bath, we heard him shouting in the bathroom. Oh my God, somebody has crushed me. Oh my God, a witch has crushed me. He finished taking his bath. Yes. We heard him shouting from the bathroom. He was shouting like a madman because all over his, all over his back and his, his hand, had been scratched so bad. And he was, he was, because the soap was entering all the wounds, and it was, he was like a crazy person. When he came out, he went and picked up a machete, and he said he will kill whoever had done this to him. Something still told me, something told me, don't say a word, I refuse to say a word. That very day, see what happened. That witch doctor, somebody brought a lamb, a sheep, for sacrifice to him. So he has used it to make his medicine and all of that for the person. That man caught a big, I think the leg, one part of the leg. He caught it and sent it to my um, to my and sent it to my um, to my nephew and told my nephew that they should use that leg of a lamb to cook food for Idika Mary. You know the meaning of that. He knew that I saw him. He never wanted me to say a thing, and now he's trying to bribe me with some meat. I allowed them to eat it. My, the people up there, they ate it. I did not, because I knew why he was doing And the man became so good to me. Whenever he sees me, he, he always talk good about me. He always tell me that I'm going to be a great man. They can also see what you can be. I'm talking about deep things. I'm talking about deep things. You see yourself, you become born again. You become born again, spirit filled, and things begin to happen. Instead of you attacking that thing, declaring a war against that thing, you begin to run from pastors to pastors to this, to that, to that, to that, and run into confusion, and the spirit of complication comes in. And what happened? The ghost of the past will take somebody in your family and begin to talk to you. I said, why don't you go back to that witch doctor? Why don't you go back to that organization and join them? They have some power, they will help you. And then you go. Instead of them helping you, they tie the knot very strong and the problem remains. Let me tell you, you can never go to those places without those places. When you leave that place, those people will always send a small soldier to follow you to wherever you are going to. And not only that, if they are correct 
if they know what they are doing, that person will release part of his spirit to live inside you for the rest of your life. Monitoring you, taking from you, always bringing you back. I'm talking about the cycle of the ghost. The cycle of the ghost. Begin to watch what cycle happens to you. At what month? There are some people that the cycle of the ghost happened to them. Certain months of the year, whether it be in June, certain sickness happens to you. In August, certain sickness happens to you. Every year, at that particular time, a particular sickness happens. At that particular time, a particular group of people appear. At that particular time, certain bad things happen. Why? Is it a coincidence? In August 2005, your elder sister got a divorce. In August 2006, your junior sister got a divorce. In August 2007, the last sister got a divorce. Is it a coincidence? Tell me about it. Why is it that at the age of 40, your father had a mental breakdown? At the age of 40, your mother had a mental breakdown. At the age of 40, your senior brother had a mental breakdown. At the age of 40, you yourself, you had a mental breakdown. What do you think of that? The father went to jail at the age of 20. The son went to jail at the age of 20. What do you think of that? Is it all a coincidence? The father lost his job at the age of 45. The son lost his job at the age of 45. The daughter lost her marriage and her job at the age of 45. Is that a coincidence? The ghost of the family always try to come back. The ghost of the city always try to call you back. The ghost, that is what you have to deal with. Nobody can deal with it with you. I don't deal, when it comes to things like that, except you're willing to pay the price with me, then I go into it with you. And let me tell you another thing. For those of you who belong to brotherhoods, I'm not going to mention the name of some of those brotherhood. But I'm going to tell you, just get away from them, those things. The reason is sooner or later, you will see the deeper things about what you are involved in. When it comes to the deeper things of darkness, they will not tell you the consequence nor the repercussion. They will just tell you, do this, do this, do this, do this, keep this law, and that's it. They will not tell you what will be the repercussion. I want you to begin to learn. From tonight, I want you to begin to think. There are voices that are calling you to come back. Voices of the past. Voices of the past are calling you. Resist it. They look good. Who is giving you advice? Who is at, Whose voice are you listening to? That's why in my ministry, there are people who came to my ministry when I began. They suddenly, they left. Sometime this year, they returned back. And then they left. And then they come back. My goodness, when I see it twice, I'm done. Because they want to steady with Jesus, the ghost of their past keep taking them back. Go back and do this and do that. They keep going. And then somewhere along the line, they will remember that they've been doing something bad. Then they will come back to the guy married to pray for them and get them out. And then they go back to it. I want you to begin to resist the ghost of your family, the ghost of your life, the ghost of your city. Begin to fight for your life. The ghost of a sickness. Begin to fight for your life. I want you to lift up your hand tonight if what I'm talking about is about you. You start out good and then you begin to struggle. And everybody in your family is like that. Know that there is a ghost behind it. I want you tonight to begin to deal with that ghost. Don't play no gentleman or lady. I want you to be aggressive. I want you to be tenacious. I want you to be violent. Tell whatever it is to live your life and tell whatever voice, whatever power has been pulling you, whatever electricity and energy has been pulling you back to those things, tell those things to leave you from tonight. Let's begin to pray. Come on, let's pray. Thank you, Jesus. In your name, Father. Thank you, Jesus. You forgive us. 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 Thank you, Jesus. You forgive us.
Begin to bind the ghost in your life, in your family. If God has been speaking to you through what I'm saying, bind the cycle of the ghost. The voice of destructive cities. I destroy you in Jesus' name. The powers against our males, the powers against our females, the forces against our progress. We bind you in the name of Jesus. We take dominion, lordship dominion of Jesus over you. We bring you under our authority tonight. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Get out, we cast you out of our lives. The ghost that is holding back our riches, our money, our houses, all the good things that God has promised us. You spirit of resistance, break laws, be gone in Jesus' name. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Summarize your prayers. There's something I want you to do quickly before we leave the front line. Wherever you are, I want you to put your right hand on your belly. Put your right hand on your belly wherever you are. If you have done so, I want to hear you say, yes, I've done so. Okay. I'm going to begin to break something inside your belly. Because inside your belly, that is where the spirit is. The spirit is on the lower part. The spirit is not in your head or inside your heart. On your legs, the spirit is in the inside of your belly. After all, that is where the second brain is. So let's pray. So I want you to be quiet. But when something is broken, you won't be able to keep quiet. So what happens to you, begin to act. Let whatever want to show up, let it show up. Because I'm going to break things and cast things out tonight. Make sure your mm -hmm. hand is on your belly, your right hand. I don't care whether it's your left hand, but I want one of your hands or both of them to be on your belly. And then, yes, 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 yes. Something is about to happen right now. Yes, this is going to be interesting. After tonight, you're going to pick up your phone, your Facebook, your Twitter. You're going to pick up your checkbook, buy money orders, go to the Kai Mary Ministries, you begin to donate because something is going to break tonight. And the money is going to break. The thing that has been keeping the money is going to break. The thing that has been keeping the husband and the wife is going to break. The thing that has been keeping the house and the car is going to break. The thing that has been keeping all these things is going to break. Now let me declare the decree of the Lord. This is what the Lord says. Be quiet. Be quiet. Be quiet. I've not yet started. When once I begin to break it, you will feel it. And then you can begin to say whatever you want. Because many of you are going to be thrown out of your chair. Many of you will levitate. You'll be lifted up from the ground. Because something is going to happen right now. 
In the name of Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus said. Out of the belly. Will arise. Rivers of living waters. In the name of Jesus. He said. The righteous. Who trust in God. And devoted themselves to the Lord. Are like streams. They are like trees. Planted. By streams of water. Out of your belly. Is going to begin to flow. The life of heaven. The life of power. The demonstration of presence and power. And dominion. Lordship of Jesus and the flow of the kingdom of heaven. The government and the economy of heaven going to begin. Break! Let something inside you that has been holding your money, something inside you that has been holding your marriage, something inside you that has been holding your money, something inside you that has been holding your house, Something inside you that has been holding your children, holding your cars, holding your resources, holding your Christian life. Break in Jesus' name. Break open. Let it break open. Break, 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 break in Jesus' name. By the mantle. Of the office given to me, I force every opposing forces inside your inner being. I command your spirit, man, be open. Your spirit personality, be open. Your soul, be open. Your body, be open. In the name of Jesus. And out of your inner being. Let the life of the spirit begin to enter. Yes. I break the dark aura that is connected with the evil aura inside. Yes. I break it and set it ablaze with fire. And now God let the presence of the Holy Ghost. Let the presence of the atmosphere of heaven come upon your people tonight in Jesus' name. Now I want you to lift up your hand and begin to say, God, I thank you. Lord, I thank you for breaking open me. Father, thank you for breaking them open tonight. Thank you, Father, for breaking, Father, for poverty, for breaking, broken relationship, for breaking all those things, Father, that have been hindering our path, Father, my walk thank with you, Father, and continue the destiny that I should be on. I thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah for all of us. Thank you, Father, for everything that you're doing. Hallelujah, Father. You are God Almighty. Thank you, Father, that you know what we needed to have broken, Father. For me and my brothers and sisters that are Christians and ancestors and generations, hallelujah, Father. Glory be to your name, Father. Gracias a Dios. Gracias, Gracias, Jesucristo. Gracias por todo, por quebrar todas las cosas que se tienen que quebrar para ti. En el nombre de Jesús. I break every wicked intelligence. 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 I break every wicked intelligence that has been against your life in the name of Jesus. I will be hearing a lot of testimonies from many of you. Many of you are watching in India. Many of you are watching in Hong Kong. Many of you are watching in Sri Lanka. Many of you watching in Israel. In the 50 states. 
Yes, the highlands. The highlands. I'm receiving testimonies I'm receiving testimony. from Europe, from, Europe. from, the, UK. from the UK, from all places of the from earth. The church meeting tonight, church meeting tonight. is tonight. gonna enter into history. Father, in the name of Jesus, let your mighty presence be heavy upon this video. Anybody who watch it, let the power of God take over them. Anyone who has participated in tonight's program, let your power hit them. Let mighty electricity from heaven come upon their lives in Jesus' name. This is going to be the birth of new generation. And new power. In the name of Jesus, I release and I call for financial money transfer into my life and into the life of the people of God. Our home transfer. Let there be property transfer. Transfer of every nice thing. Be transferred tonight. Be transferred tonight. We got it. Begin to pull it down. Begin to pull it down. Nothing can stop it. There is spiritual transfer tonight. From heaven. There is a transaction. Financial transaction. Death have been cancelled in Jesus' name. Mark that word. There is a transfer happening. There are cancellation of death. There is mighty healing. Somebody has just been healed of leukemia. Somebody has just been healed of blindness. A deaf man has just been healed. Somebody who is crippled is walking. Cancer is running away. There is power in the blood. At work right now. In Jesus' name. Good night. I'll see you next Friday. God bless you. God be with you all. Good night, Pastor. Good night, Andrew. Good night, Maria. Good night. Good night, Maria. Good night, everyone. Good night, everyone. Good night, Yvonne. Good night, Maria. Good night. Good night.